Say with me now, Father God in heaven, let your word fill my mind. Let your word be in my heart. Let your word be on my lips. And most importantly, let your grace show in my life. Amen and amen. Okay, Romans. This is Romans chapter 11. So we read in the first two verses, first of all, and then we go on to verse 29 to 32. Um, and it says here in verse, verse 1, chapter 11, verse 1, I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has cast away his people whom he foreknew. He has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Now, it, it may seem like that to us in this day and age because we know that there are many people um, of the Jewish nation that have not become born again. They believe that they are children of God, which they are, but there's a difference between children of God who are redeemed and covered by God's grace and those who are still under the law of the Old Testament and trying to live out their lives as Orthodox Jews. And the New Testament shows us that we are not to um, you know, to look down on these people. We are to actually uh, have mercy on them. We are to stand with them because God is going to redeem the nation Israel as a whole at some point. Now the whole point about the fact that God allowed them through their disobedience, God allowed them to go a wayward way was that he, he, he needed to show them that he was then opening it up to make them jealous for their relationship with God. He had to close down their opportunity um, and open it up to the Gentiles. And of course, that's why in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul and the, the disciples, they were always told to go first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. So that whenever they entered a new city, they always went to preach in the synagogue. They always went to the synagogue or the marketplaces to give the, the news of Jesus Christ as the Messiah has come to the Jews before they went later on to the Gentiles. And Paul, of course, was the apostle to the Gentiles. So it, 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 he then had a special uh, undertaking, he had a special calling which God gave to the apostle Paul. Because he was also a Roman citizen, he could have free travel you know, I mean, I don't mean free, <laughs> like we have free taxi rides. I mean, he had free travel. He was allowed to be freely traveling um, f through different countries under the uh, old Roman Pax Romana, which is like a Roman passport, uh, because he had a parent who was, who was Romish. And so therefore he had, he was of Jewish and Rome parents, so he had both. He was a Jew, but he was also had a Roman citizenship, which was amazing. You know, and God chose him, and therefore he was able to extend the gospel right the way through Europe and around the Middle East, which is phenomenal. It's amazing what God did in calling the Apostle Paul. But this is where we are now. We're looking at this, and we're going to verse 21. It says, For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. So God called Israel, God called the Jewish nation to be his chosen people. That is never going to change. It says here, the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. They cannot change. They're not going to be reversed. So the Jewish people were called by God. And so that's why salvation came through the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. He wasn't an Englishman or American or a German. He was a Jew. And so salvation came through the Jews to the Gentiles. So we have to be grateful because that nation did try to uphold God. Okay, they did make mistakes and they were disobedient and they did wander. But you've also got to realise that we can't judge them for that because everyone had a fallen nature. So what can you say? You can't say anything about that. And we're all the same. However, because they did fall, that was then extended, all planned by God in the very beginning, that they, they knew that they would fall, he knew that it would be disobedient. But... He also wanted to bring in those in the Gentile, the non-Jewish nations like us. We're Gentiles, we're non-Jews. He wanted to bring them in as well 
under his mercy and grace. Not under the law. We didn't have to become Jewish. We didn't have to be circumcised and become Jews. But he brought us in through grace, through God's covenant of grace, through Jesus Christ. And so this is where we know that the gifts and call are irrevocable. So God didn't change his mind about the Jews and then send Paul to the Gentiles and say, right, that's it, Jews, you've had it. You know, I'm not going to save you anymore. I've got Paul now. I don't need you lot. I'm just going to get the Gentiles in. You know, there's, there's a lot more nations out there anyway. We'll have all the rest. But this is where we see the, the parable of the banquet. If you go and look at that, it's pretty obvious that's what's going on. And so he says in verse 30, For as you were once disobedient to God, yet have now obtained mercy through their disobedience. Well, there, he's talking about, is the Jewish people. You were once disobedient to God, yet have now obtained mercy. You obtained it through their disobedience, through the Jewish people's disobedience. Verse 31, even so, these also have now been disobedient, hmm? that through the mercy shown you, they also may obtain mercy. Now, this is really weird, but what it's saying is that the Jewish people were under the law, and they couldn't keep it, and they were disobedient, and they went away, they went astray. So God opened it up to the Gentiles, but it came through the Jewish people, the Messiah came through the Jewish people, Jesus was Jewish, he came through, and he fulfilled the law, and then he brought in a new covenant of grace, which opened it up for the Gentiles through God's mercy. So they were disobedient too. But because of their disobedience under the covenant of grace, we also have given the Jewish people the opportunity so that they can be saved under grace as well. <laughs> that's what it's saying. And we know that that's what's going to happen. That at some point in time, and it says here, when all the Gentiles have come in, you know, all the Gentiles, in fact, it says that in verse 25 at the end. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And once all the Gentiles that are due to be saved, come in to the kingdom of God, then Israel will be saved. So we know we're not at the end of the time until Israel is saved. It's got to happen before this world is wrapped up. And that's God's plan. So when Israel was made a nation in 1948, that was the start of the end times. That was the start of it coming to fruition. That Israel were back in their own country. They were in their own land that God gave them and that would not be reversed. So this was something that nobody could stand in the way of. Eventually God would have his way and that land would go back to the Israel. So whether people think they shouldn't be there, whether they sympathize with the Palestinian situation or with the Arab nations that wanted Israel out and they had that six day war, whether you think that or not, it's not going to make any difference to it at all because God will have his way. And that's why we must stand with Israel, because God will have his way, and they are in the land they're supposed to be, and things are actually working out the way God wants them to do. And they are also our brothers and sisters in Christ. We have been brought into this kingdom of God through the Jewish nation, and therefore we should be grateful. And Paul talks about us being engrafted branches to that holy line. So this is important. And because we have engrafted branches because we are brought into that holy line of God so we become we don't become Jews but we become part of the kingdom of God which the Jews formed the main part of to start with we then become brothers in Christ with the Jewish people as well so we must stand with them we mustn't stand against them because we'd be going against God it's important to understand this and it says 32, for God has committed them all to disobedience that he might have mercy on all. So both the Jews who were disobedient and the Gentiles who were disobedient, coming through that covenant of grace through Jesus Christ, they've all been disobedient, we've all been disobedient, we've all fallen short of the glory of God, it says in Romans 8. And he's going to save us all through his mercy and his grace. Wow, hallelujah. That is amazing. Because he's got a plan. It isn't a last minute ditch effort to tidy things up. This happened a long time ago. Right in the very, very beginning, God made this plan. And so we just 
need to get part of the program really become part of the program so that's amazing and then to turn to Matthew then mm -hmm. 